Okay, so we've moved on uh, quite a little bit and we're really not taking much sort of notice of the instructions at all because we're doing it very much out of sync. There's lots of reasons for doing it this way. It really is easier to put it together and it also saves time when you're doing for sanding and filling and things like that because things can be drying instead of coming along part of the instructions and having to wait for it. So, biggest thing we've got on for up front, you probably see here, is the cockpit. Now, what we've done is lightly sanded off, it says you can find it, here it is, is the detail, which isn't too bad, off of these parts here. To be honest, if you wanted to dry brush and paint these up pretty much from the cockpit, you know, point of view, especially having clothes up like we are, you don't need to sort of rush out and buy a aftermarket cockpit for this particular one because the quality and the detail is pretty much there. Now, we're just going to be having a zoom set color photo etch plonked over the top of this, so we don't have to sand this too perfect. What we're just trying to do is make a nice smooth surface for the photo etch part to lay down on. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but certainly just make sure you got rid of all the raised detail. Now, what we've got is a little bit of glue. Goes down first, okay, and we just sit that in, give it a nudge back and forth, just to make sure, and just make sure that the edges are flush each side. It'll just make it easier when the cockpit all goes together. So that's the copper area done. We've got this bit of side wall here at the back seam. This one, these plates down the bottom, and all the rest of it. Now I'm going to stop there because we can get it painted. Because what we need to do is get that all sprayed up and painted. And again, with the inside in here. So when this all fits in, when it goes in together, it will be ready for, you know, basically just final assembly and things like that. At the same time, just down here, we have installed the refueling door in here. Um, it's not a brilliant fit, if I'm honest. I've pushed it out a little bit too far and glued it in so we can sand it flush in. It's a little bit gappy, so it might need a little bit of filler. We're going to have ours obviously open with a refueling probe in a sort of in-flight refueling look. So, uh, you know, obviously it needs to be right because people are going to look in those particular areas. Other things we've done at the same time, we've put in the speed brake doors. These are the top parts, these ones down here behind the wheel wells bit different but there we go so we've put those in and looking around at this looking at all the holes in this one it looks like there'd be s versions of this all different versions of this kit coming out because they're all pretty much generic parts so we can hope for those in the future now intakes we spoke about in the last part we've got here all we've done is just spray these or hand painted these to be honest silver now to be honest i've done these with metalized paint so they might be a little bit messy to work with but we've got these intakes now which are all dry and looking great and nice and smooth. So what we can do, we can just pop these into the rear. Now because it's paint and it's all wet and everything else, all we're going to do is literally just a few little drops of glue. Just going to go in these, do four each side. And then the obligatory nudge and that's it. I'll just do quickly the same on the other, then we can get it installed. Okay, so then again. These, quite a lot of glue on these, just to poke these in, and a bit of a nudge. Now the idea being, when we look inside here, as you can see, we can see those, you know, the first stage of the compressor blades down there, and it should look right. Now another little technique you can do with this, you can dip it, dip it into some clear gloss, take it out, let it dry, and you get that sort of nice plasticky look down there that sort of intakes get. I'm quite happy with how that is, because you can obviously shoot some clear or some gloss paint or whatever you're going to do, some gloss clear down into those intakes when we come to things like deckling and things like that. So these can now sit on. What it is, we've got this little hole guys down here. You don't have to worry about opening these up, but these are going to come along and sit on the inside. Then you've got a little shape at the back, which is sort of going to all comes together. So it sits down at the front and to the rear. And then we're just going to glue these in place. Now, I don't think it's the best design to have them sort of like this. And it wouldn't be my choice of doing it. But it's not too bad. At least for a change, we have got full... You know what I mean? This is going to come off quite easily. We have got full depth intakes instead of the obligatory. It goes back like the old Hasselhoff out kits. It has a plastic wall. Okay, so just do the same on the other. So we'll put plenty of glue down in here. Okay, a little bit on the back shield. Okay, if we get it the right way, it might help. Okay, that 
it's looking pretty good. So all you want to do is make sure you have plenty of glue between this first lip and the actual area itself, because we might have to pop in with some little bit of filler in those little areas. Okay, but don't panic too much, because if you have to come in and fill and sand, as we might have to do in a moment, what we can do is bung something down those intakes, protect those compressor blades, a little bit of white paint down there, just to spray it quite lightly, and it will get going. So there we go, those bits can be put aside to dry now. Now, talking of these intakes, what we've actually got here is a lot of ejector pin marks down in these. You might be able to see it here. So what you're gonna to have to do, you know, skinny sticks, we know are great for this, but basically all we do, start with the coarser side and we give these a bit of a scrape. Now there's holes inside these as well. Now these are obviously for a later kit coming out, which will have the radar warning receivers onto them. Okay, and then what you can do is fill those. So what we're gonna do, you're just gonna sand these out just like this. Okay, go with something quite like a medium grit just to start with, and then come back with a, the finer grits and then polish your way out just like those. Once you've done that, you're going to have to come in and a little bit of a filler. So we've just got a little bit of filler going down in here. So we just sand these now, it should be dry enough to sand. So just where this filler is. And once we've got them sanded, and looking just quite nice. And what we can do, come in with some skinny sponges and the like, and just take out all the scratching that we've made. Okay, you might be able to get in here with a full size sponge. Bring it on there. And then the skinny polishers, which are quite handy for this. You can use the polishing side because it'll get nice in those areas. just to polish them up and then nice and smooth all in there just like that so then what we can do if you want to do prime it spray it white okay for the intake color to fit those in it probably is worth doing it about now because what's going to happen is we've got these right one might help the intake system is going to fit in here like this and to spray this afterwards would be quite tricky to get down in here. So what I'm gonna do in a moment, I'll do it off camera, spray this white, this entire thing white, and then what we can do is we'll glue it into position like this, and then later on when it actually installs onto the, the system just like this, what we do is mask off the little bit of sponge down inside that intake to stop any nasties, <coughs> excuse me, from um, you know camo colors, light coats, grays, uh, things like that, which we're gonna be using a little bit later on. But it's quite important, those ejector pins, probably the nastiest ones I've come across so far on here on the kit. So we want to do those. In a moment, what we're going to do as well, you might want to get on with it, is cut out the doors and things like that. Now, if you're going to do this gear up as I'm doing this one, it's far easier to do things like inserting the doors because you can push from both sides, okay, and line them up and make sure they're all perfectly smooth from underneath. And at the same time, we're going to do this top door as well, this refueling door. Obviously, it's the Navy version doesn't have it. So what we're going to do is put that in. But by being able to hold the bottom and top, you can get a lot nicer fit than you could is if you only have one direction of trying to get it sit on the top. Okay, so what we've done now, we've placed the engine nozzles at the back, two piece. Um, the entire back end, the clamshell area as we call it, is, on the Phantom is all metallic, okay? So it's gonna be a lot easier to mask all that area up afterwards and spray it all in one. And we can do various shades and using hot metal colors, things like that, to really bring it to life. So really, it's just a case of putting it all together and we'll worry about it later. Also, these nozzles, they're black, you know, you can see straight down into there. We've got the, the actual burner, the, uh, the last stage of the actual afterburner system on there. Those are all the same colors in there. So it's easier just to squirt some metallic in there. And because it's black, it will give us that nice deep color in there. So normally, if you were dealing with something, perhaps if you're using gray plastic or even white plastic, you might want to do them first to make sure you've got it all covered. But because it's black as your hand there, you're never going to really see it anyway. Right, the other thing we've been doing, we've installed the actual, the main door on here. Now, uh, we'll talk about this little slit in a moment where it doesn't quite fit, but I'll talk you through it. What you've actually got is three parts of the gear door at the end, and we need just to snip off these little holders. Now, we take these off, so technically, it's a better fit in there. But what I've learned is I'm not going to sand it or anything else like that because it's quite gappy. Any little tabs on there will just help strengthen it up a little bit more. 
So this is what we were saying about it makes it so much easier to do this. So we get our glue ready. So you can take your door, pop it in, and I've got my finger on the underside to make it to the right height. Now if you're in a situation where you've got it all together already, don't panic. Little tip you can do, use a little bit of white tack or something, or sort of blue tack, you're going to lose it. Pop it inside the wheel well, make it to a little cone a little bit high, and then push it to the correct height, then glue it and just leave it in there. Okay, but this way we can pop it in just like that, and then we're just going to run some glue around the areas. Now, not too much because it's quite thin, and this is a weld action glue, so we don't want it melting the edges. Okay, so we just pop that one in for the moment. Okay, then we can come in with our next one. And all we're doing is roughly seating it there. So I've just got my finger on the back side. Remember, if your finger gets gluey, not to touch anything. Okay, now they're not all at perfect heights. And normally what I would suggest now is have a couple of seconds to let this go off. But obviously, we'll just push through on this. But you can see, get your finger underneath it. Drop this down. Now this is the problem one because it's nowhere near a fit. So what I'm going to do is just glue this edge to the bottom of the main door. So we've got a gap. So over on this side, you see we've got this gap. Okay, so then what you can do, take some scissors or something definitely pointy and just nudge it down to the correct height. Now what you could do is set your first door first in the middle, let it totally dry, come back and then do the others. But obviously for speed here, we're just gonna work our way around. Now we can see this one on the inside is a little bit high, so I'm not gonna put my finger on the bottom of it. We're just gonna tap the inside here and push it out just a little bit. Have a look, it's a, raised a little bit at the front, so we're just gonna push that down. Okay, but use a sharp object, don't use anything blunt, because what happens is the glue will track along it and you'll be left with a line there. Okay, so what we've got to do now is just nudge the inside of this back one out, just a fraction. Okay, and we've got that in, and that's both the doors in there. But as I said, unfortunately, the doors don't fit, and we've got this nasty gap just down there, like that. A couple of options obviously, filler, you know, just pop along, put in a swipe of filler into there, or the other thing you can do. Here, so I'm just going to work out how thick this is. It's a little bit, it's almost one millimeter thick. So, or you can take, ideally, you want a styrene sheet, but to be honest, I've only seen it's got one mil. So, what we've got here is some thin little styrene strips. Let me get one out. <clears throat> okay, so this stuff here, very, very thin, but what we can do is we can laminate it together or even we might even just glue this straight in it's probably going to be a little bit too thick so what we do is we just take too much of it and what we do we're just going to brush down some extra thin right down the length it's about a half mil gap here so what we'll do, well then we'll just come along and stick two sheets together. And this dries really, really quick. So we'll just square up the end. And we'll feel it for thickness. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> so it's not going to be a perfect fit, but I'm just trying to roughly cut it to the size we want. So we got something like that. All right, and what we'll do, we'll put a little bit of glue in here first. This is just to help it stick to something as it goes in. So we do this, and then we we'll just tap this down. It's a tiny bit too long, which is always the way. Probably better to have it too short than too long, if I'm honest. Okay, and there we go, that's a better one. And then what we can do, same way as we did the other side, we can just tap down that little join there. Okay, in with the glue, right the way over. And then what you can do is, if you can get it down completely flush, like that, is how I want it to sit, you won't have to touch that at all, because it will just dry in. 
it'll naturally look like it by the time it's painted and everything else. If you really wanted to be fussy, you could just put a smidgen of filler right over it and then re-put in the line around it. But it's a lot quicker than messing around with trying to put filler in there and then having to clean up after it and everything else like that. So it just is a quicker, speedy way of doing a very quick fix. Now this one on here now we've been doing, it's dry, it's quite firm. So what you can actually do now is nudge it to the area. So if it's not quite in the right position, you can just poke it now, you can get your fingernail on there to make sure you're flat all the way round and you're not gonna get covered in it and it's got enough movement and let that set. So there we go, that's doing that one. Same time as we're talking about it, we've got the look one on the top here. Now this isn't a perfect fit, so what we're going to do, just going to come in, a little bit of filler, so we've just got our filler here, so we're just going to grab a little bit on a blade, I'm not going to worry too much about masking up, what you could do is put a little bit of tape round, but as you'll see we'll clean this up in a moment. So just scrape it lightly over the area, Okay, and then just taking off the excess fill up, just like so. And then what we can do is obviously we'll lightly go over that. If you wanted to now also, you can just wet a cotton bud. Okay, just give this a wipe over, just to lose it off of those areas where you don't want it. things okay and there's that quick smooth over afterwards and that will take care of that so it just stops it making a total mess okay also we can see we've got these intakes done now they're all glued and painted white on the inside so they're all ready to be fitted in the other thing we've done at the same time we've popped the seats together now there's loads of aftermarket seats available on this but quite frankly because we're going to have crew figures in it we're not going to see the seat and it seems to waste it a little bit so it's easier for us to just use the normal seats and i'll show you about making harnesses that will go from the seat over the crew figures because uh, technically when you just put the crew in there there's nothing across the shoulders so we'll show you that a little bit later on and we've got those done so as you can see we've got all the seat parts ready to be painted separate as we move through with that one okay so now we can finally get on with the cockpit so this is where the fun bit comes so what we've got here is a little bit of blue tack or some tack on the back and a stick just so it's easier to hold it and everything else now particular zoom set we've got here from edard uh, this is the zoom set which is was should have a number on it uh, 49533, quite an old one. Um, it's self adhesive, which means it's supposedly sticky on the inside. Now, the trouble with these is, I found in the past they sort of ping off. I would rather have them non sticky, that way, they're so much easier to put together. Because all you do, you can use a little bit of crystal clear and maneuver them to get in. So, don't be fooled by thinking self adhesive, oh, that saves time and everything else. In my experience, it takes a lot longer to get these all in. So, to start with, we'll do down these side panels, we'll get these installed, okay? So we're just gonna take it off its backing sheet, and then what we're gonna do is just very lightly nip out the actual ones we need. Now, just using the finest tips of the scissors, okay, and just nip the ends off, okay? That way, you won't actually bend it. If you come in too soon and you bend it and it all bends, this will be bent, and then it's really hard to get it to stick down now as i said self adhesive but i'm not going to worry about that we're still going to use a little bit of crystal clear now, this is micro industries crystal clear really nice for this so we just pick up not too much you don't need tons of this okay and we're just going to pop this over obviously we've got a little bit of texture still left i haven't done these totally flat down on the bottom here purely because these are going to be stuck over the top anyway so you just take your part Okay, come along, line it up, and then stick him down. Now, it's going to be quite central, and then make sure it's flat to the outside. Give them a bit of a push, give them a nudge left and right, and that's the beauty. If it's using it just sticky, you put it down, it grips, you can't move it. Okay, perhaps you put it slightly in the wrong place. This way, this allows it still to manoeuvre everywhere you go. Now, see, you've got a little bit of glue coming up, wet the cotton bud, just give it a little gentle wipe, that will take care of that. Get rid of all your excess glue. It will dry crystal clear, hence its name, but it just speeds things up. But there we go, beautifully looking painted area. So we just grab the old snake again. 
I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Now, a few little tips using Crystal Clear. First of all, let it slightly dry before you stick anything to it. So like I'm doing here, if you pop back down, now go off and get the part you need, and we've got to cut it out, so it'll take a moment or two. What happens is this starts to cure, it gets more grippy, okay? And it just makes things stick down a lot easier. Now, you don't have to use Crystal Clear. Obviously, if you follow a lot of my builds, you'll know I use things like Gator Glue, and you can even just use normal PVA glue. But what you're doing, you're just protecting yourself because in the past, I've known these color photo etch ones to literally just peel off over time, especially if you want it on a curve and things like that. It's really not worth worrying about. So again, we'll just pop him down, pushing from the outside, lining up over the top of the other dials down below, so you'll see them. Give them a nudge, glue all squirts out. Cotton bud. Wipe up that extra. Take care of that. But just make sure the outside is in. Now this bit's in here, absolutely perfect. We don't have to worry about that at all, which is one of the nice things we were saying about this kit. I am aware, obviously, now you can go out and buy ones for this. Um, so if you want to, you don't have to mess around trying to shoehorn this one in as we're doing with the others. So that's that one in. And then what we've actually got is this little guy down here. I'm just making sure we've got all the right ones. So if we just grab this one. So we're just going to take the black backing off of the thing. But again, because it's sticky, it's quite hard to handle it because you end up pulling it all over the place. Okay, so for this, what we can do, we'll just come up with a cockpit. Put it on the back of my hand. Okay. All over. Just like so. And then what we're going to do is going to come in and fit this one in. Yeah, sharp scissors, push down, squash it all out. Fix this, wipe away. All right. Now, this is the fun one. The one that goes on top of this is sticky. So it has a habit as well of tearing the under one if you're in the wrong place. So if you don't get it down right the first time, it's a little bit of a nightmare. But there's a couple of little tricks I can show you about this. First of all, trying to cut this out. If it's easier to get to the little tabs by flipping it, flip it. As you can see, I'm sticking to the underside. One little trick I have done in the past with this is that it annoyed me so much that I kept sticking to this because it's sticky. And every time, like now, you hold on to anything, you end up sticking to it. I actually put a little bit of flour on the back, talcum powder, give it a thing, get rid of all that stickiness, and then just carried on normally. All right, so this is our little guy just here. Now he's going to stick right on the top, okay? So what we'll do, we'll come in. Now we're using plenty of glue, as you can see, because there is method in the madness here. Make sure you've got too much, absolutely flood it like so. Okay, and if you can get this off of that, it's sticking to you. And then what you do, you come along and we're just going to sit this on slightly, make sure we're in the correct place, and we push down onto this. Okay, then what we do, wipe off the excess. A bit loaded in cotton bud. Now leave the dials so they're still white. Okay, so you should end up with something like that. Now the idea between uh, behind this is, is that literally because it's all white like this, when it dries, it gives it that glassy look to all your instruments because it'll have it set in the middle, which really will help with the sort of depth of that looking. Now as I said, we've got crew in here, so we're not gonna see this too much, but certainly it will just help you out when you're actually you know, to give it that type of effect. The other way, of course, you can come back with it afterwards and put a drop in each 
little window, but it just saves a little bit of time doing this. So what I'm gonna do now is carry on and put the rest on. So we've got side ones to go on, everything else like that. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at touching up all the little areas and weathering it and everything else like that. Okay, so finished off the cockpit. So if you can see down here, if we just move this top cam down a bit. You can see it's still a little bit fuzzy at the top, but you see this is the idea and it fits in there absolutely perfect. But you might be able to see, you know, forget the radar one at the top here. This is the radar one at the top here. It's a bit cloudy still. It's still drying off, but down here, you can see these are almost crystal clear now. There's a few ones, these are a little bit cloudy on this side, but they will all dry totally clear, giving you that effect of glass. And as you move it with these center ones, you can probably see what we're after. So they'll probably take another hour or so to dry off. The cockpit area, itself you might be able to see just down here they're a little bit cloudy in there as well but you can see that instrument panel fits in there pretty much sorted this one down here has moved a little bit i just noticed we just give that a nudge back okay but there we go that's those in there just like that but what we want to do is just weather it up just a fraction so what we'll do is we'll just pop this top one just in here a second because we can weather it all Grab a little bit of glue. You could use, if you wanted to, some of the clear in here if you're worried about it. But this should fit in here quite nicely. Give it a second to bite. And there we go. We've got our cockpit a lot more livelier than what we could have painted it. To be honest, that looks very nice. We'll just put a drop of glue just on the back here. All right, now what we're gonna do is just give it a tiny little bit of a wash around. So we've got here, this is just Indian ink that I've already thinned. Okay, so it's down in here. It looks very, very dark when you first put it on, but it very quickly maneuvers around. So what we'll do is just grab a bit on the brush. So you might be able to see. Doing it all clearly like that, but you see we've got it down here. So what we'll do is just give it a wash right the way over and you can see immediately it will weather it in it will dry a lot lighter so don't panic if you're suddenly thinking well that's gone horribly wrong because it does dry a lot lighter so we're just going to do that we're just going to pop it around the floor on the side walls and the great thing about using this is obviously it won't affect what do you see it going on there as well the uh, anything else around here. So you're not gonna worry about affecting the paintwork by, if you were using like a thin wash, it will wash it all. Okay, so it pops on down the side here. And as I say, by the time this all dries, it will all be about right. Okay, so that's what one done. Now the seats themselves are painted and somewhat put together. So actually what we've got here, we've put the ejector seat together, just painted it black at the moment. We've also got, I'll show them over here, we've got the cushions. So down the bottom for this cushion down here, which is the base one, we've used some XF62 uh, olive drab. This mid cushion, this is the one that, on the back of it, okay, XF49 for the car key. And this colour here, which is often quite a weirdo one, okay, but is this sort of, you know, um, greeny colour that you see on the uh, Martin Baker Mark 5 and 7 ejector seats is actually I like to use XF26 as deep green because actually it's pretty much a spot on colour for it. Now at the moment they're a little bit wet so I'm not going to try and stick them together at the moment and obviously we've got crew and everything going to go in there but the same thing will go with these, these will get a light dry brush actually everywhere, bring up the details, the yellow and the black for the pull handles, everything else like that but so we're going to install them later on when we get the crew painted and we can pop them in to there. So what we can do now, you might be able to see this is coming on quite nicely, it's drying in here quite nicely. This entire section now fits down onto here, so make sure you get the back in first. It is important this is in the right place because if it's not, it will give you all types of trouble. So what we're going to do is just going to put a little bit of extra thin down each side and inside of these sparrow rails because it will give it something to grip to and then all we do is slide it up and down a few times and you'll feel it bite like there and then what we can do is just come in with our glue just down the back and we're going to tap it and let the capillary action do all the work and go round and sink in absolutely everywhere let's say it's quite important otherwise this won't line up in the cockpit it won't line up on the frame at 
at all. All right, so there's that one in there, and obviously you get the wheel well just down in the inside like that. But hopefully, I think you agree, that cockpit's really come to life now. It's really what we were after, you know, very, very quickly using the zoom set versus obviously trying to paint anything by hand and go through. That said, I've seen it on the internet as well. There's absolutely fantastic work being done on those, looking really, really nice. Now, same time as we're doing all of those, we've put on the top section. So we've got down here, as you see, the main doors are in there now. And we've got this wing area to go in at the top. Very, very straightforward, literally, oh, as I did it, you've got a tiny little ejector pin on the back just down here. So what I did on the other side is give it a little bit of a rub just to make sure it's flat and it's not gonna interfere at all with this other one. There's another little one just here. So you just wanna give those just a slight rub. Trust me, it'll just make it the join just a little bit better. And then what we do, we do plenty of extra thin in this area here. Plenty of extra thin on this area all down here. All right, and then come along with your wing. Okay, flip him over and then make sure you're all in and then you can grab the fronts. And then all you do, going around, Pinch that back up, and then you can come in with your pegs and look at the pegs right on the edge. Just put this all in. Just on the edge like that. Okay, and then what we do is pop some glue down in here as well, so we get the correct height on the back of the arch of where the top of the wheel well bay joins the upper or lower side of the top wing. Okay, and that will go in very, very nicely. Okay, then normally you'd let this dry a little bit, but we'll push it through. Okay, we'll pop these off just to show you. What I tend to do, hold it on its edge, something like this. Okay, and then from underneath, okay, so you're coming up from underneath, plenty of glue, just tap the underside and let the capillary action go up. I know I've covered it before, but it's really one of the most handiest tips. If you try and do it this way and tap it down, what can happen is the glue can run off, run down. It gets to your finger, you're gonna make a massive fingerprint. When it's done, it, a pair of scissors, don't try and use your hands. Give it a squeeze, and you should get the glue oozing up, which is always good. Okay, and you can do it, get your pegs back on. But by giving it a bite with these, you're not putting your finger in there, gluey fingers, gluey finger marks. I'm really causing more work for yourself, okay? So by doing it this way, it just saves a lot of messing around, okay? But just don't cramp too hard, obviously you don't cut into it, but you wanna make it strong enough, so we just make sure we've got a bit of glue down this lead edge. Okay, and there we go, that gives it something like that. So we just let that dry off, just for a few minutes, really let it set hard and everything. Oh, my God.